All right, looks like a number of people are still joining. Uh, thanks everyone for joining the webinar today, a beginner, beginner's guide to the data layer. We'll be getting started here shortly, so hang tight. We'll be back in about a minute or so. All right. Hello and welcome. Thanks again, everyone, for joining. Looks like we still have a few people joining, but that's fine. We'll go ahead and get started. Today is one of many in our Tag Inspector educational webinar series. Uh, today, the topic that we'll be going through is just a beginner's guide to the data layer. So we'll be touching on the high points. What exactly is a data layer? Um, how exactly is it is it working? We'll get into some of the very high level uh, technical aspects for how it gets set up, you know, what it is, how things get pushed into it. Uh, but mostly want to cover just from a conceptual level, you know, what is a data layer? Why is it in use? Why should you have one on your website? And then how does it play into the overall tag management process? And how does the data layer play with the various different tags and platforms? that you'll be loading and are likely loading on your website. To start out with uh, some general housekeeping items, just a little bit of background. As always, these webinars are brought to you by Tag Inspector. Uh, Tag Inspector, as many of you are aware, is a product of InfoTrust. Um, on the InfoTrust side of things, we do web analytics, tag management, product development work, uh, working with several thousand websites uh, annually. We do a number of educational sort of events, including these webinars, offices here in Cincinnati, as well as in Dubai. Uh, and presenting today is myself, I'm Lucas, down there in the corner. I'm our Tag Inspector Product Manager and also a Tag Management Consultant here at the organization. So to quickly give you just an overview for the agenda of what the different items that we'll be talking about here as it relates to the data layer, number one, uh, just an overview, what it is, how it works, uh, how you can think about the data layer. Two, I uh, want to touch on some of the areas for why it's important. Why is it something that you should have on your website? Why is it something that a lot of organizations are now beginning to utilize? Um, and what are some of the, the business value that you might be able to see so that you can take that into your organization and one, underscore the importance of why it's there and the need to make sure that it's consistently maintained. Uh, and if your organization's not leveraging a data layer at this point, um, hopefully we can give you some ideas for how we can build that business value so that here, end of this year, beginning part of next year, we can go ahead and get that onto the roadmap uh, for where your website is going. Once we touch on the importance, I want to go through the structure um, and some of those critical data points. So what does the structure of the data layer look like? Ideally, it's going to depend a little bit on the tag management system you're using, but we'll touch on that. I uh, also want to go through those critical data points. So what are the main things that you, what are the high points that you absolutely want to make sure is available uh, to you within that data layer? So page information, product information, content, user information. Um, just what are some of the things that you can start thinking about uh, to make sure that, hey, yes, it's there. No, it's not. These are things we need to add in. Uh, or hopefully just get some thoughts moving in your head as you're thinking about architecting and, and putting that together. Next, we want to go through how exactly the data layer is leveraged within the context of a tag management system. Uh, those two things playing together on your website, really critical for... Uh, efficient and solid, sustainable tag management on the website. So I want to just give you some examples. I'll be using examples from Google Tag Manager um, just because a majority of websites out there have at least some instance of Google Tag Manager on their website. So I'll go through um, using tag management, Google Tag Manager examples, how exactly the data layer can play with the TMS and what are, it'll really underscore the benefits um, more than anything else. 
uh, for the ease of deployment and management and monitoring of tags. Finally, I'll touch on a few things with technical implementation. I'll try to keep it a little bit more high level as opposed to getting real, you know, <laughs> not a deep dive, it's just a beginner's guide to the data layer, but we'll touch on some of the implementation keys and things you wanna keep in mind as you're starting to go through that process. At the end, we'll wrap up with any questions, but as always, if you have questions as we're going through the different content, please don't hesitate, drop them into the questions pane that you should have in your uh, GoToWebinar little panel. Uh, more than happy to stop, expand on any of the different points that are, you know, we're going through as going through the actual content, answer your questions there. So please don't hesitate, reach out, ask questions, and we can make this a little bit more collaborative and hopefully more helpful for all of you. Cool. So first thing to start with, just overview. What is the data layer? How does it work? And then that application with the tag management system. So the visualization that I have here is actually from uh, Telium, uh, which is one of the larger enterprise tag management systems out there on the market. They put together this visual a couple of years ago, and I think it's the best, honestly, for visualizing how exactly a data layer works, how it plugs in. So your data layer is, is just that. It is a layer or a place where all the different data points that you might need for the various different tags, pixels, uh, plat marketing platforms, analytics, advertising platforms that are loading on your website where you can house all of those different data points. So if you think about it like this, front end of your website, obviously, yes, you have your content, um, that application layer that the users are accessing and the users are interacting with. On the back end, in order to pull all that content together, you're utilizing a lot of, you know, it's your technology stack, your site stack. So all these different tools, all these different platforms in order to be able to make that application layer possible. One of those might be your content management system, which handles all of the actual content of the website. So say you have an e-commerce website and that is going to be where like product descriptions and uh, images and even if there's articles on the website, all those things are housed there. You might have a CRM system that is also you know, collecting user information or adding additional context to you know, the users that are on the web site, web page. You might be using different plugins for uh, sharing functionality, functionality or personalization on the website. All these different backend systems that have your content information, have your product information. You might be using just an e-commerce platform in order to be able to manage, you know, um, checkout and transactions. There are disparate areas and disparate platforms that house the data points that you're going to need for the various different tags, pixels, uh, and platforms that are sitting uh, on top of basically that application layer and that you're using for analytics on the websites and analytics for advertising campaigns, those sorts of things. So what the data layer allows you to do is plugs into all these different backend systems and then pulls up those data points, puts it in, an, in a well-organized place, uh, one central place so that you can reference just that one central place, that one central data layer for all the various different tags um, and applications and pixels that are running on your website. So you can think of the data layer as just a, a means of organizing information from a lot of different sources into one source so that it can be sent up to multiple different partners and multiple different platforms. So this is what an example of what a data layer can look like, just print it out um, within the console. Uh, of dev tools on your website. This just helps to uh, so you can visualize you know what I'm meaning by this. So at the top here, you have your you know product information, ratings information. That's coming from one backend system. You then have your product information, product name, your SKU uh, status. So what is inventory? What is the product type? That information is all coming from your e-commerce platform. Site section, subsection, all that information is coming from the content management system. So where exactly on the website is it? So if 
I have a tag and I need to collect my page name, I need to collect a product name, and then I also need to collect, say, a guest ID from a CRM system. That's three different backend systems that I would need to be referencing um, and you know, pinging an API endpoint for to pull in those data points just to be able to send it up to one tag or one pixel on my site. Now imagine I'm using 10 to 15 different platforms or tags on the website. It's becoming even more difficult now. So the data layer is just allows you to have one central place where you can organize all the relevant information that you're going to need for those different analytics, advertising, and marketing tags and uh, pixels that are loading on your site. In terms of just uh, putting it into you know, an analogy, you can think of it as your website there uh, currently with no data layer looks like the garage on the left. Everything you need to do various different chores or and need to do various different things around the house, everything you need is there. <laughs> it's just we're going to have to go through, we're going to have to dig around to find it, we're going to have to pull out each of these different things after a search for each one individually to be able to pull together everything that we need in order to be able to accomplish this project on our house. Once we implement the data layer, have everything well architected, have it organized, it turns into over here on the right. We know where everything is. It's easy to find, it's quick to find. We can find the different aspects and then be able to use them for one project, put them back, then go be able to use it for another project. So as we move forward and talk about the importance here, think about it in that context. Everything that you have on your website, everything that you need for those different tags, those pixels, it's gonna be there, but it's gonna be a pain to try to go around, find those things, organize those things, and then make it usable for you know, your project or in the case of your website, a particular tag or a particular platform. Whereas we organize everything well within the data layer, it becomes a lot faster, a lot more efficient, and we are able to um, just more easily moving forward, um, identify if anything is ever missing, um, add new things because we know that, hey, we need uh, I need a new drill or, or something. Um, I can know that as opposed to having to search around everywhere um, and be like, hey, I just can't find it. Cool. So that's our overview. That's what the data layer is. You can think about it in that context, just um, you know what it is that's there. You have all the information that you're going to need for the various different tags pixels, platforms, loading on your website, all organized in one central place that's easily referenceable and um, easily usable for all the different platforms and an organized structure. So that leads directly into the importance. So why should we be using this? So number one, clean data organization. We can become a lot more efficient with the management of our tags, management of our pixels, um, and then also just the management of like I mentioned, being able to identify if something's missing, if something's broken, or if we need something new. You need to have that clean data structure in order to be able to simplify that entire process. Number two, having a central place for everything. One place to reference makes it easier when you're setting up a new tag, makes it easier when you're troubleshooting something that's not working, um, and it's also making it much more efficient on the website. Uh, one thing that a lot of you have probably heard of um, or are doing now in order to be able to collect information for different tags and pixels is uh, what's considered scraping uh, a web page. What you're doing in that sense is you're scraping um, the DOM or where all the different information is being put technically um, for, to be shown on a website. So anything that's visually able to be seen by a user on your website, so say, Again, e-commerce example, you have on a cart page, uh, product name, the price, the quantity, and you need those three data points, you don't have a data layer. A common method of capturing that information would be to scrape the DOM, identifying the elements, where those values live, pulling, referencing those, pulling them out, and then putting them into, into the tag. That's not very efficient, <laughs> um, especially when compared to referencing just one central object on a page and pulling out those values from there. 
So central place for everything. Everything's in one place. We know where to look. We know where to find it. Uh, that leads into the one thing to reference, performance and optimization I just touched on. But beyond simply the just the performance of the tags, and the performance of the website, you're also talking about optimization for data collection. Things don't take as long to happen so that you can be more confident in the data being collected. The final thing on here, and I even highlight it uh, because this really underscores a lot that we talk about on a recurring basis when it comes to tag management, but easy troubleshooting and management of tags and the data being collected. By having everything in one central place, by having a unified and common data structure that we can then leverage for the different tags and different pixels, different platforms, uh, if something breaks, you're gonna know it because it's not just missing in the analytics or it's not just missing in uh, some advertising platform that you're only pulling reports from once a month to see the effectiveness of some campaign that has been running. It's missing from everywhere. So much you know, more red flags are raised when something goes missing or something breaks, and you're able to just fix one thing as opposed to having to go through each and every single tag and make updates. Makes troubleshooting easier, makes management easier, makes just ongoing maintenance a heck of a lot easier. So hopefully that underscored, like I mentioned, just the importance why we need to have a data layer as well as what it is. So the next thing I want to touch on is just the structure. So how should the data layer be structured? Um, how should everything be organized? Uh, and being able to just introduce a few different concepts uh, as you're thinking about that. So number one, we need to start with an overall measurement plan. Come across way too many clients, way too many partners that are just going through when trying to put together a data layer and it's everything that's possibly that I could be capturing and grabbing, I want to put in there. And they think about the same thing when it comes to some of the different analytics platforms. Anything, any possible combination of user actions or user activities or user data points that could be available or possible to happen on a web page, I want to collect it. We need to think about it a little bit more strategically. What's really important? What are our goals for this page, for this website, for this user? What are the different actions and the micro conversions that are going into those macro conversions? Um, and measuring those so I can optimize those things. Similarly, taking that strategy for each of the different platforms, each of the different tags, that you're using on your website, you then need to roll that up. And there's gonna be overlap, but there's going to be a lot of different data points uh, from those different platforms that are gonna be necessary. So we need to fold all of that together and that is what leads to the overall measurement plan um, and the outline for the data layer itself. So some different data requirements that you can be thinking about, you know, user information. What type of user information? Did you a user ID, a guest ID? Uh, different things in order to be able to unify users across browsers, um, across devices. Page information, page name. You want to have a unique page name for every single URL that's on your website. Likely it's going to be some sort of an endpoint within your content management system. Um, but you know, keep that in mind for conditionally executing tags on a page. And we can use some attribute within the data layer in order to be able to accomplish that. So we need page information. Uh, product content information, you know, product name, SKU, category, um, variants, all those different things for products. Different events and interactions to track. These would be the user actions that are happening on your website. What are those actions? Is it, you know, just form submits, contact us submits? Is it add to cart events? Is it quick views of product on a website or uh, registrations, logins? What are the different actions that you want to be tracking on a website? And really thinking about this strategically in what are the micro conversions and what are the actions that really move the dial for us as an organization that I need to be tracking because it's going to need to be optimized. And then once you think about all of these different things, what are the data for each? Um, and the data for each is more of like the context for the events. Um, or the actions. So the actions are what people are doing, 
what data it would be, you know, what data points, what do we want to know about that action? Uh, you know, button name, action name, whatever those things may be. Those are things to consider in the measurement plan. Once you have that comprehensive list, it's going to be folded into the overall architecture that you're going to be working with um, within the data layer. So again, general structure. Here's an example of um, a data layer object from a page. Uh, and here we can see page information. We can see events. Uh, we would see product information if uh, that e-commerce object there was dropped out. One note I also want to make, and I can't underscore the importance of this enough, is typically between 80 to 90 percent of your data layer requirements in your architecture is going to be informed by web analytics. And I say that because web analytics, when it comes to tags, pixels on the website, typically your web analytics platform is going to be the most comprehensive. It's going to be where you're tracking the most events, where you're collecting information across every single page for every user. So the data requirements for web analytics are going to be much greater. Due to that, <laughs> the requirements going into the technical architecture of your web analytics platform are going to be greater. There's going to be more technically that needs to be done, more that needs to be set up. Now, and I have in here just the Google Analytics enhanced e-commerce example, platforms are starting to make it easier by building in additional functionality to the scripts and the JavaScript that you're putting on the page based upon if you can get data in a specific predefined structure for them to be able to use. So enhanced e-commerce is an incredible example. GA is enhanced e-commerce. If you have it, everything architected in the proper structure, proper nomenclature within your data layer object, and you are deploying Google Analytics via Google Tag Manager, you can use a template tag within Google Tag Manager, set up an event tag sending to you know, the property ID for your Google Analytics platform, and enabling and collecting all that product information for enhanced e-commerce is as simple from a tag configuration standpoint as checking a box. And that is all due to having the proper information in the proper structure within the data layer of your page. Same thing is true for other platforms out there um, and putting things with, into that structure. But I just want to, you know, again, can't underscore the importance of that enough. Think about with the different platforms that you're using on your site. Think about what those requirements are and how can you make the overall deployment and, and management of these tags easier, um, especially as you're thinking about architecting out the structure and the data points that are going to be available within that data layer. So that is you know, high level for the structure. Now I want to get into some of those different critical data points and things that you're really, really going to uh, want to one see uh, within a data layer on the website, uh, as well as things you're going to consider either adding in to what you already have existing on your website or um, adding in as you're architecting a brand new data layer. Number one, and I touched on it before, but page information. The reason why page information is so important, oftentimes you're not going to be collecting page information in a tag. Now, sometimes you might in uh, an advertising platform because you might want the page name to see where a you know, user landed on a page um, or, I don't know, what type of page did a certain action take place on. But frequently, you need page information for, again, conditionally executing tags uh, that are loading on a website. So <clears throat> think about a, we'll use a double-click floodlight tag, for example. Very common advertising platform a lot of clients are using, or any advertising platform for that matter. You're running a campaign, driving traffic to a specific product or a specific landing page, um, as a part of that campaign. So you're going to deploy a tag on that landing page to be able to get a count of how many people have visited. That then within that, that 
advertising platform, you can tie back to, okay, this is how many impressions we saw on this ad. And then this is how many conversions we saw for, you know, just click throughs, how many people loaded that page. And then finally, you're going to deploy another tag on your confirmation page um, in order to be able to see how many people actually purchase whatever that product was, you know, from that campaign. So you can determine campaign effectiveness. In order to conditionally execute tags uh, on those various different pages, you need the page information available um, and you need that available within the data layer object. So by having page name, you can say this tag should only execute on the initial page load of this particular page or this particular page type or this category of pages. It allows for much, much easy, easier um, management uh, and deployment of tags moving forward. Some other things there along with the page information could be some user information around user ID, geolocation, uh, hashed email, uh, or just an email in, in general. You can put in clear text there. A lot of advertising platforms will request that. Number two for critical data points that you're going, going to want to include within that data layer is going to be product information. Uh, so product name, product category, SKU, price. Uh, again, these are just different requirements that are frequently necessary for, for one, analytics, uh, but also different advertising platforms. You want to know what is being viewed on the site, what is being added to bags, what is being purchased, uh, and that product information becomes critical in order to be able to analyze those different aspects. So you're going to want the product information being there uh, within the data layer, easily referenceable for the various different tags uh, that are loading on your website. For a content website, you're going to want to think about, obviously, content information. So article title, article author, category. And again, this way you can analyze the user actions and what users are consuming on your website, what pages are being visited, uh, which pages have better engagement than others, uh, any sort of content information. Put in the data layer there um, so you can utilize that within analytics, uh, within advertising platforms. And then finally, the different events. So uh, some things to think about, automatic timing events uh, on a page or a video view, product view events, impressions, or just viewing ads uh, or banners on your website, as well as obviously purchase events. So going back to when uh, talking about actually the strategy behind uh, what to really put into the architecture, what to include in the data layer, um, those events, those user actions that you're wanting to track, and then what are the data points that need to be collected uh, to add context to those events, to those user actions? I want to make a quick point here for how exactly the data layer is leveraged um, in the context of a tag management system. It's going to be in the exact same way if, you know, even if it is just tags on the website or if you have your own sort of container, your own. Uh, JavaScript file that's loading these different tags. Uh, but in the context of a tag management system, and I'm going to use, again, Google Tag Manager specifically here uh, because I know it's a very popular tag management system. Um, so there's three different aspects that are going to map directly to the data layer. Uh, obviously, three different aspects within a tag management system are going to be your variables or macros. Uh, which you can just think of as a placeholder for a value. Now, your variables within a tag management system are going to correspond to the variables or parameters, however you're naming those placeholders within your, your data layer. Uh, number two, things that reference and utilize those variables are going to be your triggers or your firing rules. Um, these are when do tags execute. Under what conditions? Is it all pages? If it is on all pages, on what timing event? Um, if it is only on certain user actions, only certain event names. Uh, again, firing rules for when tags execute, and then finally the tags themselves. The tags themselves reference the data layer in order to be able to pull in the individual specific data points that need to be captured for that platform. So let's dig into each of these a, a little bit further. Uh, again, using screenshots and examples from Google Tag Manager, 
this would be uh, an example of a data layer variable that's being created here in order to reference a product name. Now the data layer structure being utilized here is the enhanced e-commerce standard Google Analytics data layer structure. Um, and that dot notation, as it's called there for the data layer variable name, um, which right here is looking at an e-commerce object and then a detail object and then a products array, the first index in there and the name. Basically all this is doing is providing a map <laughs> for how Google Tag Manager should go in and where is the value that it needs to pull in. Um, and all of that is again dictated with the structure and what is within that data layer object. So we can create variables like this and then I will just have that name value whenever it's available on a page is going to be populated as this variable name. So EEPDP product name. I can then use that variable name and then just plug it into triggers or plug it into tags. And I'll show an example of it in practice here in a moment. Uh, but I can plug in that variable and then whatever that value is at that point when the tag executes is what the value is that's going to be sent up to that tag to that platform. So again, I can create basically a static setup within my tag management system to reference my data layer with those values constantly changing as necessary for the page or for the action and then can keep everything uh, the same for my actual tag architecture, my tag deployment. This is what uh, it will look like when it comes to triggers or firing rules. Um, so you can start referencing just a custom event or an event that is happening or being pushed to the data layer. Uh, all you have to do is define what that event name is. And in this case, a particular tag uh, with this trigger applied would always fire whenever a product click event happens or is pushed into my data layer object. So my tag is going to execute at that time and whatever variables or macros are contained within that tag uh, are going to be sent up to that specific platform. The final piece here is the tags and I wanted to do this. This is actually, you know, this is JavaScript for um, a Facebook event or a view product event. But this really highlights exactly how those variables or how those macros are inserted in there. So again, these variables directly reference what is within my data layer um, and the names, the variable names that are within the data layer. So when this tag fires or executes, all of these different uh, things within the bracket, so product SKU, product name, product category, PDP price, those are referencing a data point within my data layer. And so that value is gonna be what's populated there when the tag fires. So regardless of the product being viewed or uh, the ID of that particular product, it's going to be dynamic because the values in my data layer are dynamically changing with whatever product is being viewed. So going back to the importance and the reason for why you want a data layer on the website, you update one thing and then these variables within the tag management system are automatically updated. These variables within the tags are automatically updated. So I can have five, six, seven, ten different tags when a product view is supposed to happen, all referencing the exact same variable and all pulling in the exact same value. One, it makes management, again, much easier. Uh, but two, on the, you know, in the future, I now have a standard data structure and standard data nomenclature, um, the whole nine, when it comes to the data being collected by the, my various different platforms, which is gonna make integration downstream much simpler as well. I want to finish up here with just a quick, uh, few quick notes around implementation. So, <clears throat> Don't want to get too technical here um, again, but a few considerations, a few things to keep in mind uh, that you might hear floated as you're talking to some of the technical teams, development teams with implementation. Um, and you might hear if you're working with a partner <laughs> on the implementation of these different things. So number one, your data layer object needs to be defined on every single page. So from a technical standpoint, what your data layer object is, is it's just a JavaScript object that lives on a page. 
that's what your development team, that's what the implementation team is going to refer to it as. as. So it needs to be defined. You need to say, this is here. <laughs> um, you need to make it available, or in the context of the example where I had the uh, toolbox, you need to make that toolbox available within the, on that page within your garage. The definition, when you're defining it, should contain the base level information that you need, which is oftentimes just the page information. So anything that's going to be available at that point that is, you know is going to be required and really going to be needed for the various different tags, you should go ahead and put it in when you're saying this equals this. So data layer is this blank object with these different variables that I already know uh, what the value should be. Boom. Those get defined at the top of every single page, so it's always there. It's always going to be available. Now, as user actions happen and more things become available uh, from the various different backend systems that your data layer is plugging into, that's where push commands start to happen. And so you start pushing information and data points into that object. So that's how dynamically when a user clicks a button, an event for a view product event can be pushed into there or shown up there. That's how you can then create that conditional trigger for tags to execute at that point. Because your tag management system is just listening for that event, as soon as it sees it within that object, boom, we're saying fire uh, this particular event or this particular request for the tag. An important note, and come across this all the time with people that are just starting to work with data layers or um, really trying to build something out new on the website. The data must be available, must be there in the data layer at the time of the tag execution for it to be usable. If your tag is executing before some data point is available and surfaced within that data layer object, it's not, you know, magic. <laughs> um, it, it can't be used. We see this all the time when it comes into you know, some timing issues with tags. Some, a tag will fire and it should be collecting a you know, product SKU, for example. But that product SKU hasn't been made available within the backend e-commerce platform yet, so therefore it can't be within the data layer yet. So the tag fires, SKU is undefined, uh, and you can't match things up or you know, put in a, a product feed or anything like that uh, because we're not collecting the SKU. So we need to delay that tag from firing uh, until that data point is available there within that data layer. One other quick call out, just a caveat for single page applications. Um, single page applications, a lot of websites are starting to go to this framework. That's uh, where just content dynamically changes on the front end. Um, in this sort of a scenario, you're going to be continually pushing data into that uh, data layer object, including page view events. The object can get rather large. Uh, but those events need to be there in order to be able to conditionally fire tags. Uh, but there are some additional caveats that I'm not going to get into too deep here. Again, want to stay higher level, uh, but things to keep in mind if your uh, website is performing in that way. So that is really everything um, as far as basics of the data layer that I wanted to get through here today. Um, at this point, I will turn it over to any questions uh, that might be out there uh, that I can help with. A couple here, it looks like around um, just recordings of the webinar, absolutely. I'll record all of these so I can make that available and send over. Uh, we do, we will send out. Uh, following the webinar here today. Ooh. It doesn't look like I have any other ones. Um, as always, if you have additional questions, um, or specific questions to your, your specific situation you want to reach out, please do. Uh, please send them over, just an email. Happy to help out in any way. Talk through um, any sort of issues that you're seeing or anything that you need help with on the website or in reference to the data layer. And um, hope to see you again 
on some of these future educational webinars. We'll have a follow-up in two weeks, I believe, on leveraging Tag Inspector specifically in real time for testing, validation, and monitoring of the data layer itself. So uh, hopefully we'll see you on that one. Let me know if any questions. And thank you all again for joining. Have a great rest of the day and rest of the week.